Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm John and today we're going to talk about uh, the Nico Helgermite and I'm going to show you how I rig it, how I fish it, why I have confidence in it, what rod and reel and line and setup I use and all that. So let's get into it. First off, this is the Nico Helgramite and it's made in Japan, made out of super duper tough material which really helps in fishing. So this right here, I'd say is one of the best Creek River bass fishing lures. If you're targeting smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, spotted bass, mainly those three things, um, any kind of black bass, the, some of the bigger ones, some of the smaller ones, I haven't caught uh, as many, I don't think I've caught shoal bass on it yet. I haven't fished a ton with that. Shoal bass live in a little bit different situation, a lot of times murkier water, but majority of the time I'm fishing this in some clear, clearish water like we have around here in Tennessee, a lot of clear streams. And this thing has caught me so many fish. It's caught my PB, smallmouth, ton, uh, six pound largemouth, tons of tons of fish. I've seen them hit this lure where I couldn't get them to hit other lures. And I've also learned how to fish this in a way to get lots of more bites where I used to not be able to. But um, so it's a three inch soft plastic bait, uh, resembles a Helgramite, which is a lure that's in a lot of, the, I don't even, a lot of wires around here, but I don't know, they're probably all over the place. It's a bug and uh, the thing about a Helgramite is smallmouth bass in particular love them, but all fish in creeks love to eat Helgramite. So Helgramites, um, they come out and then they turn into a, uh, Dobson fly, I believe it is, but either way, it's just a little creature that comes out, and they get, they do have pinchers on them, and um, they look like this. They do look like that. They get up to about that size. Some are smaller, but fish love to eat them, so it's one of their favorite foods. So a bigger bass, this is a small small bait. Uh, a bigger bass has no trouble eating this because they they really enjoy it, and they really want to eat these. Little fish will tear this thing or try to eat this thing. Luckily, they do not tear. So that's the Nico Helgermite, and they have a lot of colors. This one is the Mudbug, my favorite color for clear water. It's like a dark brown. It's got a little bit of fl uh, flake in there. Um, this one here is the Black Aurora. It's like a clearish black one. I don't have a pack of the natural ones with me, but the, the natural one's a black one, one of their first colors, and I will really like that color too, but something about this mud bug color, uh, it just calls out to me to use. And um, also, they do have the bright, they have some magma colors. I haven't had as much luck in these, these brighter colored ones. There's, um, there's several different ones, but uh, something about the dark, that black one, obsidian one's a super black one. I like the really dark, dense looking ones. I feel like, I've done the best with those. So let's talk about first off how I rig it up and then um, we'll talk rod and reels. Then we'll talk how I fish it because that's very important to, to where I know a lot of people use this lure and they're like, I don't, I'm not catching fish or I'm not doing this. So something I've learned in fishing it, I think will really help some people out and hopefully get you on some more fish. Here's two different hooks. This one right here is a 1 16th ounce owner uh, jig head. This one over here is a 1 10th ounce z-man bullet z jig head and this is my favorite hook right here for this this is a, either a 1 15th or 1 10th ounce not a lot of weight i'm usually fishing it in current and in shallow water i've like, I caught a six pounder out of a lake on it and i've also caught a four and a half pound smallmouth out of a lake so it definitely works in the lakes but it really shines and just uh works so good in current clear water rockier streams muddy streams fine but just just where it, it's gonna bounce along and look natural and come into come in front of fish. Also caught some giant trout on it too. I forgot about that. Trout love this thing. But um, it's just gonna come and look like a natural something that's gonna come in front of them. But so this right here is my favorite hook to use, the Z-Man Bullet Z. It's a, I think it's a one-aught hook, pretty small hook, um, lost lightweight, but it's also got a little keeper there. Um, and most lures are going to tear up whenever you put them across the keeper. So some people have trouble hooking it up and I've had to learn this. How, how do I like to do it to be able to pin fish because this stuff is really thick. If you have a hook sticking in there, it's not poking through very easy. And like I said, and showing you're not just going to tear it apart. So I take the lure, take the hook, have it sideways and actually I've already tore off one of the little pieces there, but there's a little like little pincher on top right here and his head and I'll stick it right in the head and there's actually some eyes there you can barely see them 
But uh, I'll stick it right in the head and just barely poke it through the edge right there in the head. Just sideways. So I got it hooked sideways straight through the head, just barely poking through, just a little bit to give me some um, something to hold on to. Slide it up over that little keeper, and it and it pops right. This stuff stretches really good. So you're gonna pop it right over there. You're not tearing it up at all. I got it over there. Got it in place. That that top part is gonna stay in place. So I take the bottom part and just like you would normal, like you'd hook anything, just turn it sideways. Or just turn it and poke it through. I'm going to come through sideways. i uh, do it like this. So look at that. It's basically weedless. And I got it going through sideways right there. Instead of the long way. And you can see the hook. It's it's on, it's just it's out, exposed. But it's barely. And you can see the little tentacles. Are kind of keeping it from getting poked in there. So I do it sideways like that. I get asked a lot. Like why do you do it sideways and not you know, most time you're going to have it a hook just coming out the front or the back. And I'm like, I don't know why. It just makes sense to me. It's flat. You can barely see the hooks there. Um, those little tentacles kind of keep the hook front. You can kind of keep it out. You don't have to like stab it into the lure, which sometimes I do. But you can kind of keep it out and not have to worry about the hook getting hooked on everything. Um, the way the lure is flat and drifts in the water, I feel like going sideways helps that too. But... I have caught a ton of fish and I've pinned a lot of fish and once I've gone to this hook and the rod and reel setup that I use, I've really increased my hookup ratio. I was using a Ned Rig hook, I only have one with me. I basically just stopped using like regular straight Ned Rig hooks. Now you can make them weedless, but I, I would use them in the exposed hook. And with the exposed hook, I always thought I would, I would hook, hook up fish better. I'm like, okay, I'll hook them better because the hook, I got a big hook coming out. I would lose fish all the time with that setup. I don't know why. When I've gone to this, when this thing when this thing pins them, it pins them. They're not coming off. This hook is super strong. It's a pretty thick hook. Very good point though. And it this thing this thing has worked very very well for me. So I get asked a ton. I want to really show that how how it goes. So that that's that's how I do it. That's how it's rigged up. This thing is ready to go fish. So let's what rod and reel are we putting on? This is another lure that I used to use a medium light on and i've come to use a medium extra fast so i use a medium extra fast almost for a, for a ton of lures now but it makes a big difference when you're fishing this lure in particular so i'm just going to tie it on to um let me go, i'm just going to go and do it i just use a uni knot most knots you can use whatever knot you want to use but i'm going to tie it on to a six this right here this one's a 610 but i use a 6a 69 or 610 usually medium extra fast tip where that fast tip um, loads really quick and when you set the hook it doesn't bend way down the rod it bends up here at the top and that's very important because how I'm gonna fish it so I got this thing on there got my rod a medium extra fast 10 pound fluorocarbon leader line um, I got 12 pound braid on this one but I use 10 12 pound braid a 2000 size reel so I'm gonna show you how I fish this one more for rivers and creeks now this, this is because that's where this thing really shines um, you can fish it a lot of ways but it's in rivers and creeks so you got, you got water flowing through it. Um, I'm looking for deep holes to throw it into. I want to sink it in. I want that, I want this lure to do uh, nothing. I want, to, I want to have no effect on it. I want this lure to do whatever it wants to do, as far, uh, um, mainly. So I don't want to be trying to make this lure do something. I want the lure to do its own work. So when I cast it out, I'm not trying to twitch it and pick it up and pull it. And the, I'll throw this into the water. I'll cast it out there and let it hit the water. And just let it sink, close my bell, and let the current do the work. Let the current work for you, because that's what's going to happen. Fish are looking to eat something that got caught in the current, got flushed down, maybe a minnow or something that got spun out. Maybe they're, they're sitting around the bank. Um, Helger mice live in the water, and they get they get knocked up, and they they drift. They'll drift down, and the fish is looking for them. Like a, like a trout, is, if you ever watch a trout looking for food, any almost all the, all the bass and all the fish in rivers and streams do the same thing they feed the same way so bass is looking he's sometimes he's in the current i've caught so many bass in strong current that I, you wouldn't believe are there i just cast it into the current and there's no breaks there's no nothing doesn't doesn't look like there's anything worth casting to just let that lure i cast it ahead of me up upstream let it drift back down to me let it drift past 
Throw it back up over here, let it drift past. Give it slack. Don't be trying to pull on it. Kind of let it do its thing. And um, throw it in the deep holes, throw it in eddies, throw it like, but and also, but mainly where it, like I've seen it pull out fishes, I'll throw it in current, let, give it a little slack, let that thing bounce. So every two or three seconds, I kind of just pick up um, so it's not stuck on a rock, let it bounce. Pick up, let it bounce. Sometimes it'll get stuck on a rock and it'll just stop. And I'll just tighten my rod and pull and just kind of just twitch, twitch, maybe just like little taps on it. See if anything's pulling back. If it just if it pops up and just keeps on bouncing, I'm like, okay, nothing's on it. So what what you're gonna happen is I'll throw it out there. It's drifting down. The lure stops. I pick up a little bit and I feel just a boom, something tugging on it. That's where you you just set the hook into it because what's gonna happen is and why this rod uh, comes into play when that thing is drifting down the current. You're gonna, it's gonna have a bend in the line. I don't think, you probably can't see it, but there's gonna be, a, there's gonna be a, the, the lures here. There's gonna be slack in the line coming back up to me. So here's the lure. The current's going this way. It's popping down. There's the, the line, the, the current's pulling my line in a loop. So I got a lot of slack line out there. So if I feel a tap, that's where I love the braid too. You can, you can feel it really quick. If I feel a tap, I want a fast rod and stiff enough to set the hook to pick up that slack and get a good hook set on that fish. When a, especially the big bass, when a three pound smallmouth in the current grabs this lure, you might not even know he's on. He will be so calm and just not like nothing's going on. He's seen there, he's drifting. It comes right, he, you know, maybe he sees it over here, he moves over. You can't even see him. The fish are sitting in there on the rocks. He may be two foot deep and you don't see him. He bites that lure, he just grabs that lure and he's gonna go back to his spot, wherever he was. He's just gonna grab that lure and sit there. Maybe go back over here. Maybe just sit over here. And you're just you're just like being super sensitive. You feel something like wait a minute. So maybe your line starts moving. Maybe you just feel a little tug back on it. Like what? Why is this thing pulling? And that's when you just you set the hook into it good. But you you wait till you feel that thing. Set the hook. Keep it tight. And, you know and. Um, that's why I also want some 10 pound line. I like it. I broke it off too many times on lighter line. I want some strong line because I want to be able to set a good hook on there. Now, can a, can a bigger rod help? Yeah, a 7 foot, 7 2 rod might be better for you. Uh, I love the 6 8, 6 9, 6 10 size because it, I can cast it in, under trees and, 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 and you know, with stuff in the way. I've used a 6 6 rod. I like I really like a 6 6 medium rod. I feel like, but when I'm in my kayak, I feel like I'm losing a little bit of leverage. So if you're fishing this out of your kayak, you might want a longer rod because you want to set a hook good. Um, there's there's lots of ways to catch a fish, but this this right here works for me and something I've like I've learned and figured out by doing a lot where I feel like I'm pretty good at it and I feel like I can target areas where a lot of times people are just gonna skip over, especially in current or in flowing water. I've also seen this thing drop right in front of a smallmouth where I'm watching this fish. I throw the lure, hits right in front of it, and he'll, he'll look at it, slowly go over there, grab it off the bottom. If I throw it out there and try to move it a lot, he won't mess with it. If I throw it out there, just let it fall. Let him go over there and get it. If, he's, if his nose is on it, maybe just a slight little tug, just a little movement. But most of the time, when they see this, they, they hammer it because they, they love to eat these things. But, but when I say hammer it, it's not like they go after it like a minnow. They're, they don't go wham, like they got to grab it. They go up to it and eat it. They go up to it and eat it. I've seen them come off the bank and do it. I've been in my kayak, watch fishing. I cast over the bank. That thing's just drifting and kind of sinking. And I'm kind of letting it drift while it's sinking. So I'm watching it. I cast, it hits the water. It's flowing with me in my kayak. Fish come off the bank eat it, slowly turn away. It's very calm a lot of times when they eat it. So don't be thinking I'm fishing this lure and I'm waiting for just a slam or just a big thud like they like they would something else. So they, it's a very calm, very easy. Um, I'm not sure if a lot of people fish a Ned Rig same way, but I don't use a Ned Rig a lot because I feel like this will do everything I want a Ned Rig to do and more. And I, I just like how versatile it is and how the less I do, the more fish I catch on it. 
I just like lures like that. Something about them. It just calm, just easy, just convenient. It just makes those fish come out and bite it and, and eat it. So I got three rods here that I like to use. They're all medium extra fast and I've learned that that faster tip really helps me out. But the, still with the medium I got enough sensitivity and softness where I can still feel because you want to be able to you want to really be able to feel just a slight bite or slight things. Also with the 10 pound braid I can throw this lure. These lures don't cast really well because they kind of they kind of catch the wind. But even with a 115 ounce jig head, I can I can sling that thing way across. If you're using, you know, 15 pound uh, fluorocarbon, you're not casting that lure very far. Now, can you catch fish on it? Yeah, use six pound, eight pound, 10 pound, will probably work fine too. But I really enjoy the braid, and I I, I got extra sensitivity. I feel like I get better hook sets, and uh, be able to land more fish. Well, thanks for watching. I also have a discount for the Nico stuff in uh, my video description. I think it's called, I think it's Creek 10 at nico-fishing.com. Get 10% off any of the Nico products. They're expensive, but they're super high quality, about the best quality stuff you're going to find. And they got lots of other lures too, but this, this Helgamite fits the way I like to fish and just, I love, if you like stream fishing or clear water fishing, you got to try something like this out. There's other brands out there too, but these, these, these are very durable and strong and you can catch fish after fish after fish on them. You can unhook them and re-rig them 5, 10, 20 times, and I've done it. And you can cut it down to a smaller size if you want. You can do a lot of stuff with them because of how durable they are. And paired with these hooks and this lure, I'm really confident I can go out and uh, target smallmouth, big smallmouth, small smallmouth. All of them will bite it. All right, thanks for watching.